Continuing on with Caleb Williams, Oklahoma quarterback, enters the portal, said he's not ruling out returning to OU, but is basically listening and fielding offers. It's college football free agency. I'm all for player empowerment. I think it's a great thing. Coaches can leave. They have buyouts, by the way, that someone's paying, either they or the teams. In the NFL, guys can move around. However, they have contracts. They can't leave until their contracts expire or the team trades or releases them. And so now in college football, this one-time transfer rule, like you have a great season, you may be at you know an, an average school boom. I'm just going to open this up to the highest bidder. I'm not necessarily against it, but there's something that just kind of tears at the fabric a little bit of doing it that way. Like I'm all for these guys making money, but playing one place one year and then just opening it up again and saying, hey, who wants to pay me to go here somewhere else and get an NIL deal and all this stuff? I'm just trying to figure out, you know, what the end game is with this and how college football ultimately looks. You know, we've arrived here. Like, you're not putting the toothpaste back in the tube, but I do think we need to sculpt some guidelines and some parameters about how this thing is going to operate. Because if not, it's going to get real squirrely in a hurry. And you're going to have guys jump in and highest bidder stuff. And believe me, like I said, I'm for these guys making money, but, you know, the ability for them to leave, you know, after one year, playing great and then just like opening it up not really just to see where they can make the most and so what is that what is that doing with your team that you're currently at and i'm curious how these nil deals will be written and how everything's going to be structured with that and you know they start going through my mind uh, rick newheisel brought up the question to me uh him and childers i was doing some xm work and like you know, what about columbus ohio or anywhere for that matter and hey, we're going to institute a tax and with that tax those tax dollars we're going to fund NIL deals for players. What would stop that? I mean, you think about it. Teams, they do it for stadiums. You know, you have hospitality taxes or a little income tax here, whatever it might be, bed tax. That, that helps pay for that. It's going to facilitate the businesses. Hey, we want more games. You know, if they're going to be an eight, uh, it's 12 team playoff. Like we want our teams playing restaurants, bars. They love it when they have that. People fill those things up, have a home game, the hotels, they're going to make money. What would stop that? What would stop one of the athletic departments in the Big Ten or SEC now that they're going to be getting, you know, $75, $90 million coming in from these new TV deals once they're finished up, have a quasi-agency that they create, put $10 million in that pool, have an administrator run it, they kick in, you know, donations from the private industry, and that's run separate of the athletic department, and they call it, you know, blank you, uh, blank state, you know, marketing. And they run that. And that's part of the package that you're putting together for players. Like these are all ideas. And I'm not saying that they're good or bad. They're just out there. And it's going to substantially change the fabric of what we've watched and watched for so long. And so I'm trying to figure out if there's a way to make sure that you can maintain some of the nostalgia that people love while also getting the players, I believe, what they want and deserve. It's going to be a tough, tough thing to tightrope and a tough thing to balance.